What's going on? What's going on? Back again for, <clears throat> for quarantine marketing part three. So if you haven't catched the other videos, go back, make sure you watch the other videos after this one's over. Do me a favor, tag your friends in the comments, share the video if you're finding value and drop me a hashtag live or hashtag replay. And I'm going to be sending out one person who's going to win uh, the book pack with the loan officer strategy guide and the nine figure blueprint. And you can see that I'm actually even the right way this time because people shared with me yesterday exactly how to do this. So now I know and that on an iPhone, you can reverse the, uh, you can reverse the thing so that you can be able to be, so you can read it the right way, right? Like I rewrote it with my normal text and like you can see the shirt and stuff. So, Hey, that's pretty cool. Right? So what's up, Nathan? What's up, Walter? Appreciate you for jumping on. Okay. So real quick, again, this is video number three. So if you haven't already go and, um, watch the other videos as a quick recap, video number one was all about creating connection with people. The fact that you have their attention right now more than ever, and that you want to, you know, entertainment needs to be a part of your marketing, right? I mean, at the end of the day, personality and this kind of stuff is the only things that separate us out, right? I mean, all loan officers, realtors, y'all all do the same thing, you know, just like same thing for, you can say the same thing for agencies and stuff like that, right? A lot of them are doing the same kind of stuff, but you can separate yourself out by being entertaining. Okay. So that was day number one. Day two was about being omnipresent, getting reviews and creating certainty within your marketplace, right? Today, right the second, there's a lot of uncertainty and you can create certainty within your marketplace, okay? So that's where we're at right now. That's where the first six ideas, again, go back, watch those videos, um, but we're gonna press forward into video number three, okay? So today, number one, uh, I guess really number seven on our list here is systems, okay? Now, there's really a few different kinds of systems that people need to have in place. And if you're sitting at your house and you're having to hang out with your kids and, and that kind of stuff, if you need to just be like working, maybe there's some things that you could be working on your business if you're not working in your business as much right this second. Now, I still get that obviously people are crazy busy, but if you have time right now because of the fact that you're having to be forced into your house and, and that, if you have some time, work on your systems, okay? So what systems should you be working on? Okay, well, I'll give you three different examples of ones that I think you should work on right now and have and, and get in place if you don't already have them in place. What's up, Allie? What's up, Bill? What's up, Daniel? Appreciate y'all for watching live. Okay. So number one system would be marketing, right? So obviously you need to have some kind of marketing system. In our case, we've been sharing all kinds of different things here, but you know, something with marketing, right? This can be like lead generation. This is how are you growing your business on a daily basis, right? Or on a consistent basis. And how, how do you, do you have any kind of systems in place for that, right? Does it always require you to be involved in order to, um, you know, keep the ship moving forward? Or do you have any kind of system in place that can be generating leads and doing that kind of stuff? You know, I put a screenshot earlier today because yesterday I got a, I got a listing from a, uh, from a realtor here in Denver, or he's in Parker or something like that, like kind of Southeast Denver. And I got a listing from him and I ran an ad with it yesterday. Now I was just trying to generate name, email, phone number. I wasn't looking for what's the highest quality leads I can generate. I was more looking for quantity. And so I was going for name, email, phone number, but you can see the screenshot I put up. It ended up costing me like 32 cents a lead or something like that. Right. Um, you can have systems in place the same way. So I, I have systems where, you know, that'll do, generate the lead. The lead goes into an automation um, using KLT CRM. And then from the automation, you know, that's converting into appointments, into conversations and that kind of thing. Right. So if you don't have a system in place today for your marketing, think about that. What can you put in place right now? What can you put in place so that even in these times of lockdowns or whatever, right, if you have great systems in place, oftentimes it's not that effective. You know, you can tell that people are still interested in real estate because in the last 24 hours, like I said, I generated 21 home buyer leads in Denver for like $20 or something. I think it was like, uh, no, way, way less than that because it was like $6 or something. I don't know, like six bucks I think I spent to generate 20 21 leads in the last 24 hours, right? So what kind of marketing system do you have in place today? Okay, the next thing is you need to have some kind of database system, right? So do you have a, do you have a database system in place? What are you doing to stay in touch with the people who already know, like, and trust you? If you don't have a system today, work on that, right? Like, um, I think you should just send once a week emails uh, on Thursday afternoons. People are chilling. They're already thinking about the weekends. You have their attention. So write them an email every Thursday afternoon and it doesn't have to always be around mortgage or real estate or whatever it is that you do. 
it's really should be more about you and what you have going on, right? So talking about personal stories, client stories, client testimonials, things that you find online that, um, that you think are shareable and are worthy of other people paying attention to. So it's these kind of things that really are more impactful than trying to demonstrate your knowledge and your expertise inside of the emails. It's more about creating connection and owning some space within their mind. And then on top of you know, that weekly email, having a retargeting system, right? And having some sort of videos that are staying in front of your database and the people that have already shown interest in what you have going on on your business page through just really cheap, you know, in our case, we call it the Cerberus guard dog method and it costs $3 a day and it keeps you in front of your entire database and anybody who's, anybody who's shown interest. So what can you be doing right now? If you have some time, what can you do to be working on your database? Well, you could schedule out emails. So I'm not a huge fan of using whatever the canned stuff is, but you could go and pre-write emails out maybe for the next couple of months, right? Maybe you get enough emails written out in, in a couple of hours, you can write out uh, one quarter's worth of emails, right? Because that's only 12 emails per quarter. So it's not a huge amount. You only need to write about one email per day in terms of just staying in touch with people and then having that retargeting thing in place. So take, think about that, right? Could you take a little bit of time tomorrow or next week and could you get the, all your emails in place so that you have a database system that you know is gonna be consistently going out? Because where people lose Everybody recognizes that the database is important. I'm sure you do as well, right? What's up, Brian? What's up, Daniel? And, but, but what they do is they try to do it in real time. They're like, oh, I'm just gonna write the emails every week and send it to them in real time. And, and it never works, right? You get behind, you miss a week, now you feel bad, you miss the next week and you feel worse, now all of a sudden you just stop doing it. And then before you know it, you realize that a month or six weeks has passed and your database has not heard from you by email. So that's why it's way more effective if you can, um, <clears throat> it's way more effective if you can have some things pre-scheduled and have it where you know it's gonna go out, but ideally it's something that you've written, right? So it feels really personal. It's in your lingo, your dialect, all the kind of ways that you talk. Yeah, I appreciate that. Okay, so do your, so work on your database, right? They're out there. The database is really the gold mine. It's the thing that you've worked so hard to create. So make sure that you're doing something to keep yourself in front of them and continue to build that relationship. Don't just let those people fall away because you're focused on getting new business and new leads. So make sure you have some kind of system in place for your database, all right? And lastly, is for, for, you know, in terms of having systems in place, are you doing live events, right? What kind of events are you doing? Now, obviously, I totally understand that right now is kind of a weird time. I spent two hours this morning, a little over two hours, doing a live training for realtors in Denver and normally we would have done that in person. And for sure it's not the same as doing it in person. It's definitely, uh, definitely way more valuable doing the training in person than doing it online. But right now we just have to, we have to adapt a little bit. But in general, as a general statement, what are you doing for live events? So real quick, you know, there's like 20 people on here. Drop a comment and let me know. When is the last live event you held? Whether that was a training or a database event or, you know, what's the last time that you hosted a party or some type of event for anybody. Okay, drop me a comment and let me know about that. So in terms of events, depending on if you're a loan officer or a realtor or you know what exactly your role is, you wanna have some different types of events, right? You wanna be having, um, in, in my case, if you're a loan officer, I think you should be doing at least once a month live events for real estate agents where you're teaching and helping and training them, not teaching them about new mortgage products but you're teaching them stuff that's gonna be impactful to their own personal business. You know, how to do Facebook marketing, YouTube marketing, Google marketing, SEO, online reviews, any of these kind of things where somebody can come to your training, implement it in their business and go out and get more business and bring that uh, back to you. And that's never gonna happen just from teaching them, um, you know, about the new VA loan updates. You just do that yourself. Yeah, the LOD panel we did, that was awesome, man. Yeah, for sure. It was cool seeing you guys on there. So. What can you do with live events? So with realtors, you should be doing maybe once a week live events for real estate agents, but then for your database, you need to be doing live events for your database, right? And depending on how often you're doing that, which I mean, based on the lack of comments and response when I asked the question, I'm assuming that in general, you're not, you don't even know the last time that you did a live event. So then maybe you think about that, right? Is how, when is the next time you can plan one? Now, again, 
I get that right now is kind of whack. So maybe be planning one for the fall, right? Start working on it now and have a, an event that you're planning out with, um, you know, with, like in September, right? That's we had to move our event that was happening in March. We had to move it to September. So maybe think about that. Maybe you need to go out three or four months, five months, six months in order to, you know, start planning events out that way. But what could you do, right? In order to do a live event for your database and just get in front of them. One really simple idea, it actually comes from the loan officer strategy guide, is doing a, is doing a movie night. It's the easiest, easiest um, database event that you can do, right? Go to your local movie theater, see when they're slow, um, get rent a room, rent one theater out for that night, and get a package deal where they're going to include the movie, a popcorn, and a soda for each person that comes, and um, invite all your database there. Ideally, have some kind of like golden ticket, almost like Willy Wonka style tickets to invite people. If you can splurge it, get a background set up with a step and repeat banner. Get people to stand in front of there, have a photographer there, take pictures, post all those pictures on your Facebook business page, and people can tag themselves, you know, on the on all those photos. And anyways, the people that I know that run these movie events, 100% of the time they run the movie event, it's profitable before the event ever starts. Meaning that just based on the fact that they're inviting people to the event, they're getting business off of just the invitations, right? So it's always a break-even event 100% of the time. I've never heard of one person tell me, I ran the movie night and it ended up costing me money. Because everybody says, yeah, it costs some money, but they got it back before the event ever happened because of the fact that they, um, you know, that, that event just kills really, really well. So, so events, right? Just think about that. And again, it's not that you have to be smashing out a ton of events right now in this wacky time, but just to be prepared, right? What events can you have set now for August or September? What can you have set for November? What can you have set for March next year, right? These kind of things. And where you plan it out and you just know that, in this, in quarter one, I do a movie event. In quarter two, I do a trampoline park. In quarter three, we do a, you know, or Easter egg hunt in quarter two. Quarter three, trampoline park, right? However you do your your things. Quarter four um, could be could be like a, a pot, pumpkin carving event, you know, that kind of thing, right? So we'll be looking at events. Look at your systems and see. I mean, right now, it's just a great time if you're if you're having to take some downtime. Not get not everybody is. Okay, but if you're being forced into taking some downtime or you can't work at the same capacity in your office, it's a time that you can look at your own personal marketing and how can you be able to put some of this in place for yourself, okay? So that's number seven is your systems. Okay, number eight is we're talking about like things like Zoom and Be Live, right? So obviously in this case right now, you know, I'm just coming live on Facebook, right? Um, but, but we use Zoom and we use Be Live, both of those things. I did an online summit. I did a virtual summit on Monday this week, and we used Be Live for that virtual summit. So it's pretty simple software to run. Um, it has a free version and a paid version. So the paid version of Be Live is twenty four ninety nine a month, something like that, or twenty nine dollars a month. And but you can use that to be able to go live on Facebook, go live on your page, go live in your group if you have a group, right? Um, you can be using this kind of content. Also, what's cool about Zoom and Be Live is both of those, they record your video. So you can have it set to where it records, and then you can drop that recording other places or you know, chop the recording up and do different things with it. So once you create this, you know, if you're going live on Facebook or you're using Zoom Be Live to project yourself out to either on, like I said, either on Facebook or on your business page or inside of a group or whatever. But Zoom and Be Live, man, they're awesome ways that you can be able to at least get like this on video people. You can bring people into a group. I saw a lady that I know in San Diego, um, Glenda Meyer. She hosted a really cool happy hour, right? So I think it was on Wednesday. Maybe it was yesterday. Yeah, I think it might have been last night. And she just used a Zoom, sent out the link to all her friends, and they all got on there. And they were just like all drinking together on the Zoom, you know? So that's pretty cool. I mean, there's different ways, right, of just right now. Again, you know, we talked about it on Tuesday is uh, creating some connections. Everybody's, people are going to be craving connections as they're forced to stay in their house. You know, they're used to being in an office or they're used to being out in public where they're getting other adult human interaction and they're going to be craving that. So how can you use Zoom and be live and that kind of thing to, um, to be creating that now, right? You can, both of those things, you can bring in people, you can go live on Facebook or on Instagram if you have, depending on what account level you have. Right, but but be live is cool for that because 
especially if you have a, if you're a realtor or a loan officer, you probably have a local, some kind of local group already. So you could even be going live in the local group and you know, you could go live with other local business owners. Here's an example. Say you have a local group, you're a realtor with a local group, post in the group and say, tag a restaurant owner who's still open for to-go orders or a delivery and bring and then message those people and bring them on alive and you guys all just chat it up about you know what's still available for customers how's it impacting their business you know this kind of stuff right so it's like there's a lot of ways to be creating community and today since you can't do it in person zoom and be live are both um, really good resources um, to be able to do that in in an online world and then also be able to broadcast it live if you want to onto your facebook or onto your instagram profile so what we're doing with those right there I'll give you some ideas right here that I wrote over here. I think I pretty much covered them all anyways. So, you know, you can either be, um, you know, you can either be training or teaching something, kind of like what I'm doing right now, right? I'm just providing some value, creating some content. What's up, Hurt? What's up, Trisha? Appreciate y'all for watching. And so you could do that as well. You could be training, you could be teaching. Maybe use it as some um, way to demonstrate other pieces of your personality. So if you watched the video from yesterday, we talked about how to create um, six things that you're known for or known as and because oftentimes people don't know what to talk about online right you're really funny you're really cool in person but you don't know how to translate that into an online environment so you could be using zoom or be live to demonstrate some of those other things right so like we talked about or even facebook live like this right so if you're a great chef or you love to cook set your phone up on the tripod and go live and and talk to people while you're cooking right let them ask you questions have some things that you want to talk about and and just it's just a way to demonstrate a few of your different personality pieces right in terms of your real estate knowledge and and that kind of thing but then also mixing it in with your cooking and with things that you like to do outside of just how you make money um so think about that teaching and cooking and then also or sorry teaching or training and then also demonstrating other pieces of your personality and then the last way is like i said with glenda how she used it for the for hosting an online happy hour, right? So she just shared out the link with all her friends. Everybody jumped in. They were able just to kind of hang out, fake cheers, you know, this kind of stuff. And I'm sure it was like an awesome time and something that her friends will remember. Remember that time we did the virtual happy hour uh, when we were all in lockdown, you know? And so you can be creating some of that uh, for yourself as well. So Zoom and Be Live, definitely great resources. And also Facebook Live, like I am right now, right? Okay, last one that I want to share with you guys for today is um, is how to get more juice, right? So, what does that uh, what does that really mean? It's like how can you get more out of what you're already? Um, how can you get more out of what you're already doing? Okay, so I wonder. Hopefully, I wonder if the audio like switched off. I had my microphone on, but I see that the microphone died. I'm assuming that you guys are still hearing me since nobody said like, hey, we don't hear you anymore. So I'm just gonna assume that it switched from a, that it switched from having the microphone on to just doing the audio here coming out of the, coming out of the phone. Okay, so, um, okay, so how can you get more juice? So number one is to look at your network and figure out, maybe there's some people that you could be creating tighter relationships with within your network. Okay, a lot of times people are looking like, always looking for new, going out, how can, you know, how can we go get more, 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 new, new, new? Well, maybe what it's about is just actually increasing what you already have going on around you. So um, how can you look at your network, right? How can you look at your own network and get more, you know, and get more, um, get more deals, get more partnerships? You know, what can you do to, within your own network to be strengthening those relationships, right? Strengthening them and tightening them up today making sure that you're not disappearing, okay? People are gonna go into this quarantine or whatever's going on right now, and, and some people are gonna disappear. And you wanna make sure that you're not one of those people that are disappearing. You wanna be out there, you wanna still be um, in the mix, right? You wanna still be having action on your profile, bringing content, just making sure that you're not disappearing. So what can you do within your own network to go out, maybe either reconnect with people that you haven't connected with in a while, or just have a reach out on a phone call. You know, what can you do with your own network to strengthen any relationships that you have there? Uh, number two is how can you co-brand? Okay, so a lot of people right now, they're looking for more business. They're looking for ways to get, you know, more exposure. So how can you offer that? Either through co-branding from, 
you know, people that you can bring up or look around people that are serving the same customers as you, but they're not direct competitors. So as a realtor, co-branding for a realtor could look like tons of people, right? You have people uh, from interior designers, home painters, uh, home stagers, in, uh, landscapers, pool people, um, home inspectors, right? Roofing companies. There's all these people that realtors are kind of associated with, but you're not direct competitors. So how can you be looking to co-brand with some of those people? What can you do to create some co, you know, co-create content right now? If you have some value to bring to their network, could you guys create some video together and let them push that video out to their own, you know, to their network? What can you do to look at everybody has their own individual personal sphere, so how can you benefit from those other spheres that are existing today and get out there a little bit more, right? So it's not that you have to go and put a whole bunch of money into the market in order to find these. This all right here is for free. Right? This is just looking at who's already around you and how could you leverage existing relationships. All right, the last one is ambassadors. Okay, so ambassadors to me is somebody different than what you would co-brand with, right? An ambassador is somebody in your network that has a lot of pull. They have weight. They have their own sphere of influence. They're well-known. An ambassador could be somebody like a CEO of a company or somebody that runs HR for a large company. An ambassador could be somebody who is well-known within your local community, somebody on the city council, the mayor, um, somebody within the police department, right? These are all different potential ambassadors. So how could you be looking around for, again, within your own existing network of people that maybe you don't have a good relationship with them and you need to create one. You know, they could be a huge referral source for you. Oftentimes an ambassador doesn't necessarily have anything to gain back from their, their referrals. They, they do it because of the relationship that you have with them. You know, that's the best example is somebody that owns their own company or runs HR for a company. They're gonna have a lot of opportunities to hear about people that may wanna buy a house or they're gonna be you know, in, that, in that circle of information and because they're your ambassador, they could be sending all that business over to you, right? They can be recommending you for that business. So look around, go through your own Facebook um, friends list, go through your own Instagram connections and this kind of thing, your LinkedIn connections and look, who do you know that's not associated at all with the real estate industry, but that they could be a huge referral source for you? And what could you do to reach out to them and provide value or create a better relationship with that person so that when the time comes, hopefully frequently for them to be referring somebody for real estate needs, you're the person that they're going to think about or for mortgage needs, you know, you're the person that they're going to think about. So be looking around for ambassadors. So, I mean, right now, you know, all this right here is completely for free. I mean, a lot of times people are nervous about money today because they don't know what's going to happen over the next couple of weeks, right? And everything's going to solve itself out and everything's going to be just fine. And, this right here is going to allow you to go out and organically create a bigger, stronger, better network of people around you and having you inserted into other spheres of influence by co-branding with people. And then also, how can you, again, look at creating ambassadors, do an audit of your own business and see where do you have ambassadors in your business today? Who are those people? Right? What are their common characteristics of the ambassadors that are referring you more than three to five deals a year? And maybe if you have amazing ambassadors, that number is higher for you, right? Maybe that number is an ambassador to you is somebody that's referring at least six deals per year or whatever the number is, right? I would think in general, if you look around at how many referrals you get per person that you know, somebody that's referring over three or five deals a year is probably a pretty significant amount. So, and, but, but that number could be small, right? If you go and find the right, if you go and find the right ambassador, okay? So that's what it's about today. So basically today's tips were, number seven was work on your systems, right? It's an amazing time right now if you have some downtime to improve and work on your business as opposed to in your business. And um, number eight is uh, using Zoom and Be Live and Facebook Lives and these kind of things where you can still be on video, you can still be connecting with people, using it to provide training or value, um, and also looking at how you can just use it to connect with your friends. You know, they're all stuck in the house just like you are, assuming you're stuck in the house like we are. 
then how can you use it to have your own happy hour or smoke break or whatever things that you want to have with people and just have some fun, create some human connection because often people are going to be craving that right now if they're not able to go to their office, they're not able to go out and do the normal things that, that they can, go to restaurants and bars and these different places that at least locally for us, they're all completely shut down right now aside from takeout. And also with the Zoom and Be Lives, how can you um, create value for anybody locally? If you have your own local group or even within your own profile, how can you bring some local restaurant owners on and let them tell that they can still serve people and this kind of stuff? You know, how can you be out here just looking around, you know, just um, we can all lift each other up a bit, right? And if you have a network and you have some some pull within your own group of people, then look around for how you can do that. Who can you bring on? Who can you look to, to lift up locally in your own market, all right? So that's what's up today. Again, if you leave a comment or a question and it's something valuable, I'm gonna pick somebody to win the book pack, the loan officer strategy guide, and also the nine figure blueprint, all right? So you're gonna win the, the pack. Um, if you're catching the live right now, drop me a hashtag live. If you're on the replay, drop me a hashtag replay. Thank you so much for tuning in. Tomorrow will be the last day with the last three tips for quarantine marketing. And if you're liking this, drop a comment or a like or a love or whatever thing and appreciate you for tuning in. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Later.